The passion for cars started pretty much as early as I can remember, really. I remember my parents watching Formula 1 on television and me wandering in and asking which ones the red cars were. As soon as I felt what it was like, even from the passenger seat from a young age, I remember loving going quickly and loving feeling a car sliding around and that's just progressed. And I think that's probably why I love rallying so much. Writing is wonderful and immensely frustrating at the same time. And rather like the cars and the driving, what you really want, what you're striving for, what you long for, and what so rarely happens is a, is a flow. I've been doing this for nearly two decades now and the, the sheer excitement, I suppose, and enjoyment is still exactly the same. Those emotions, they don't change, I don't think. MST or Motorsport Tools is based in North Wales and started out selling, surprise surprise, tools, but then branched out into escort parts and that now forms the majority of the business. Of course, if you sell all the parts needed to build a complete car, then the logical next step is, well, obvious. A Mark II with a Duratec engine and a six-speed Mazda box came first and now there is this, a Mark I with a 250 brake horsepower 2-litre BDG running on Gen V throttle bodies and a Life ECU. It's a nice mix of traditional and modern and something I hope to imitate in my own Pinto-engined car. Oh, that sound! That distinctive, rasping sound of a BDA, because that's what everyone really refers to these as. It's the sound of a BDA in the forest that people talk about. The BDG is just a it's the later, so the ultimate almost really iteration of it because it has an, an alley block. BDA, in case you're interested, stands for Belt Drive A Series. You could go up to a Millington with over 300 brake horsepower and a sequential box, but I think the BDG with this car's Type 9 H pattern 5 speed is perfect. The relatively short 4.9 final drive means you can really exercise it at same road speeds too and it's topped off mechanically with a gripper limited slip diff in a fully floating atlas axle and 13 inch mini lights. Inside it is very posh for a rally car but still quite spartan compared to almost anything else. I love the soft Alcantara that's been quilted by an ex-Bentley trimmer and the seats are fabulous but it isn't the sort of car where everything is hidden. It's like a barn conversion with a big rug in the middle of the bare stone floor. Even with the trim and all its fluids, this car still weighs just 980 kilos. The price is a little heftier at £150,000, but even that is pretty lightweight compared to the other resto mods out there. Talking of which... Now you'll notice that I've been calling this an MST Mark 1. 
there's been no mention of Ford or Escort. And that's purposeful, because this is a brand new car. So whereas something like a, a Porsche 911 reimagined by Singer has to include the manufacturer's name, this is the opposite. And being new, actually, I think, sort of liberates it somehow. Because while it still looks and drives like a 1960s, early 70s car, you're not fearful of it. You're not sort of worrying that you're you know, denigrating a piece of history somehow. It's a bit like buying, I don't know, a, a PG Woodhouse or a Jane Austen in a modern hardback from a bookshop. You still get all the wonderful language and the story, but you're not worried when you turn a page that you might rip a first edition. Although I own a Mark II and I love the Mark II shape, I fully agree that really Mark one's probably prettier. It has that more voluptuous, more 60s styling to it. And of course, mechanically, they're really identical. And that wonderful balance and flow that you get with an Escort, they just feel so friendly. If you do find yourself on an empty, wet roundabout, you know what I mean. They have this amazing way of just sitting into some oversteer feeling so happy and friendly and controllable. It's a trait that you'll feel in everything from the most humble escort on Leaf Springs all the way up to a wild dream build. You get the sense that this is a car that's on your side, fabulously playful, but also supremely forgiving. One of the really interesting things about this is that they put tractic suspension on it, so it's running build styles before, just a normal passive setup, like you find in a lot of rally cars. But now they've got this tractor set up with the adjustable dampers. In fact, you can adjust them front, rear, and pitch and roll. And in their softest setting, I quite like it. It just takes it's a little bit of kind of looseness by the way it turns in. You tend to drive it in a more sort of relaxed fashion. It's still got, obviously, you all the camera settings and everything stay the same. So it's still got all that feeling to it. And but then it doesn't quite work over the bumps, so you dial it all the way up to five. Three sort of feels like a kind of neither here nor there, but dial it all the way up, and you've got all that control and stiffness in there. All the precision comes back. It's a really clever system. I love to try it with some of the full-on WRC spec Riger dampers that MST sells, because they are just witchcraft in terms of how flush they feel and yet how much control they retain. But this is pretty good fun. It's just fun being able to change the character of the car with a tractive system. And the ride was impressive at lower speeds around town too. It's not a cosseting car, but the suspension soaks up things like speed bumps really well. All helped, of course, by the fact that it weighs so little and has small wheels with decent sidewalls on the tyres. It's got a surprising amount of grip on its little 13 inch wheels in the dry. We've obviously had all sorts of weather today, typically British weather. Typical Escort, steering as much with the throttle as with the steering wheel. One criticism of the tractive system, which I have tried before, is that the panel down there is a little awkward to reach. Obviously, you can adjust it on the fly, but that's a little bit awkward to do. You really need to slow down and make sure of where you're pressing on the screen. Wow. Look at this landscape. And it's terrain that is somehow very appropriate for this car, because these roads are right at the heart of some of the best classic rally stages in the country places that Roger Clark and Hanny Mickler would have tackled in their Mark 1s. We've got sort of Klokainov, then Brennig, Ken Magno, North and South, Diffie, and then down south you've got Sweet Lamb, Heffron, and the Heron down there as well. One of my favourites. No wonder this feels at home, really. I said it before, but I love the size of this. It just gives you so much freedom. So clearly I love this. And I think even at you know, £150,000, including VAT, this feels like 
quite a bargain compared to a lot of other resto mods out there, even though this isn't really a resto mod, but I think we can class it as one of those. So what are the reasons you wouldn't buy one of these? Well, despite the fact that I've obviously been impressed with the lovely trim in here, the quilting, and I think these seats are really comfortable. And I'd put up with probably more rawness than most. There is no doubt that this is a raucous little car. It's definitely a car for a weekend blast rather than probably to go touring in. I'm sure they could build you probably a slightly more refined spec, but that would then take away some of the character as well. When you're manoeuvring, the motorsport clutch is a feisty thing and tests your pedal dexterity. But you're helped out in tight spots by the excellent power assisted steering system, which removes the effort at low speed but leaves you with all the feedback you'd want as soon as you're on the move. Oh, and did I mention it's quite noisy? probably tell I'm on cloud nine in the driver's seat. Must get my car finished. Perhaps I'll bring it up here. <laughs> 